Good evening, I'm John Allen Namu. It is in the first 100 days of the Jubilee government's term, one of the more controversial policies a President Uhuru Kenyatta has chosen to pursue. The laptop for every standard one pupil project, especially in light of the current teacher strike, seems too lofty a goal for the cash-strapped Jubilee government, according to its critics. Tonight, though, we take a look at the other side of the laptop debate through the eyes of a country that already has its own laptop project up and running, Rwanda. This is Perspective, and the show starts right now. This week, we take a look at a news item that wasn't necessarily a headline-worthy event, but one that nonetheless deserves a second look. The media breakfast hosted by President Uhuru Kenyatta for members of the Editors Guild makes our headline versus bottom line for this week. This week's headline, President Uhuru Kenyatta hosted members of the Editors Guild to a media breakfast during which he sought to convince members of the media of Jubilee, the government's good intentions for the country, as well as create a good working relationship with the media. But here, though, is the bottom line. Whereas it is a good sign that the government would appear to be as open as it is with the media, it should also be appreciated that as journalists, we have a role to question and hold the government to account. That duty demands that whereas a relationship based on mutual respect between the fourth estate on one hand and the government on the other should be maintained, it should not be taken as a sign that the media will be lenient toward the government, either by members of the government itself or by us journalists. Because journalists, including this journalist, had breakfast with the president doesn't mean that we checked our responsibility to the public at the gates of State House. That is headline versus bottom line for this week. In 2008, as Kenya was dusting itself off after a bitterly contested election, an ambitious and contentious pilot project was in the offing not too far away in Rwanda. The Paul Kagame-led government, recognizing its geographical limitations, as well as the fact that there were few natural resources to be developed for economic growth in that country, decided to invest in its people, its children specifically. Five years later, the one laptop per child policy is well on course to becoming a global global model on how investment in technology can change a nation's future. As Kenya debates the merits of the Jubilee government's laptop project, here's a bit of perspective on what a similar project looks like in Africa. Our senior reporter Mercy Kandia spent a week in Rwanda and debuts with this report on the, their one laptop per child policy from the outside looking in. This is a social studies class being taught in the heart of Rwanda's capital, Kigali. It's a public school, so they've got benches instead of desks. But what sits on top of these benches is the difference between this class and the thousands like it in Kenya. Now, by using our computers, remember that you will see the objects. These small white and green laptops are being used in this class at GS Gisozi 1 Primary School in Kigali, Rwanda. And with every topic, the students come up with a program to back up what they have just learned. And so after today's lesson on the mode of transport, these are the programs created. Visual imagery of what was taught in class. This program, it's helped for me to know how the fish live in the water. These aren't your usual laptops. They are specially designed for school children. A teacher doesn't only have a book as a, a resource. There is uh, another way of accessing to the content. And also the student just see that there is another modern way of uh, working using uh, a computer. And this helps them to work, uh, to, to work for themselves and to, to just uh, compare what they, they learn from books to what can be found 
uh, everywhere. The excitement in the classroom is the outcome of a difference from the traditional way of learning. A class charged, embracing technology. The laptops contain various programs, and like hundreds of other schools here, there is a server that stores information relevant for every lesson. One laptop per child, what is currently the topic of heated debate in Kenya, may just be one little Africa's country's hope. The hope that Rwanda's one laptop per child policy, or LPC for short, when fully realized, is the key to development. The power of belief. John Rutasire is the man charged with delivering this hope. He is the Director General of the Rwanda Education Board, the implementing body for the OLPC policy. And he knows that Rwanda isn't exactly flush with natural resources that other countries depend on to drive their growth. Rwanda uh, has no gold, has no diamond, has no oil, so we depend on our people for our own development. And for that reason, uh, information, communication technology uh, is a key priority for our development in terms of uh, Vision 2020, in terms of Rwanda being a middle-income country uh, in the next uh, 10 years or so. And despite the definite and clear barriers, Rwanda set off a project under the office of the president. And after the bill was passed in parliament, a pilot project started in 2008 with 10,000 laptops circulated. A year later, the OLPC program officially kicked off. 100,000 laptops were distributed throughout Rwanda, reaching five schools in each district within the 30 districts of Rwanda, from the city to rural areas, coming from a dark past of the 1994 genocide and struggling to grow its economy. The project that cost the government an equivalent of 1.6 billion Kenya shillings annually initially had its fair share of critics on the government's priorities, not unlike the questions being raised about Kenya's laptop project. Rwanda, you are a poor country. How can you afford to be giving laptops to, to your children when you, you, you have other priorities? And here, again, I'll give you a simple example. We've just now completed a cycle of more than 200,000 uh, laptops, and this is spread across the country. And the answer I always give to people who say, is this your priority? The answer I give them is, are we going to wait until every we are 11 million Rwandans. Are we going to wait until everybody drives a car before we buy an aeroplane? No, development is not like that. You must look at the key components of development and then look at the priorities and then be able to invest. And those will become an engine and pull up other sectors of the economy. But you cannot wait until everybody runs to work before someone else drives a bicycle. You cannot do that. Rwanda walked the talk, but was it just an urban initiative? Out, we set out to Nyamiyaga village in Rwanda's rural northern province. Here, life unfolds much in the same manner that it does in other parts of rural Africa. There is no electricity here, but the one laptop per child is slowly being realized. GS Mugina Public School in Gishumbi district is one of the schools that use solar energy to power the laptops. The school is among 300 public schools in rural Rwanda that have already installed solar energy capacity to enable the realization of a homogeneous implementation of the OLPC. When you look at most of our countries, 
uh, 70% to 80% are population in the rural area. How can I bring somebody with the knowledge from Singapore, from California, into the rural area? The only way around it is to bring in technology. One village at a time, and the small steps taken here are made in the hope of reaching far, believing that the OLPC will move forward and steer the economy, not as a village, but as a country. The schools that did not have proper infrastructure get empowered. One million students in P4 to P6, equivalent to Kenya's class 4 to 6, have received laptops. One laptop costing 200 US dollars. The old are trying to catch up so the new technology does not pass them by. But in class, those teaching the computer classes are generally from a much younger generation. One of the major challenges that faced and continues to face the One Laptop Per Child project is cultural and mindset issues. One of these being that in the rural areas of Rwanda, the teacher remains the authority. The OLPC project threatens this notion. Another challenge was the debate on whether a computer library should be constructed in every school to save money and disregard the one laptop per child policy, but the OLPC was settled on. As what was targeted, we are told, is the deep individual transformation that would occur if every child owned a laptop with the intention of reading the young generation of traditional ways of learning, setting their eyes on the world and with one touch by one child, the connection to the rest of the world begins. We are in the 21st century. And you see, how can we give our children 21st century skills? The skills that you and I have today are not good for tomorrow. No, because our child in the primary school today is not a child of yesterday, it's a child of tomorrow. So we cannot continue to pack them with the skills that we went through yesterday. No, they need skills for tomorrow. And this is where the one lot of child comes in. So when we had developed that idea, we knew that Rwanda was a rural country mainly. And so we said, OK, we have to start somewhere. Up next, we visit with families whose children have benefited from the OLPC and argue the merits and demerits of Kenya's own laptop project here in this country. Stay with Perspective. Kenya's economy being about five times bigger than that of Rwanda. Kenya has economic advantages that Rwanda could only wish for, like a port or large tracts of arable land or the recently discovered natural resources that are poised to put Kenya in top gear, economically speaking. But Kenya's population is also just about five times that of Rwanda's and with a quarter century of economic underdevelopment prior to 2003, the question begs as to whether the one laptop for every class one child can be realized back at home. We need to look at, at uh, this laptop project as not a political project, but a project that will, in, will, 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 will change, will transform. Uh, the, the way we deliver education to the kids. This is where the world is going. To fly high, Kenya's ambassador to Rwanda, John Mwangemi, believes though gigantic, the laptop project is an investment that Kenyans should embrace. John Onyimbo is a Kenyan living in Rwanda, and he, like other Kenyans living here, have a bias whenever they hear about the debate on laptops in Kenya. Right. Okay. If you read something, it talks. It says it, eh? Yes. Okay. That's Type I something. It reads activity. Ah. Type even your name and see if it's it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then. One informed by their own children, who are all beneficiaries of Rwanda's one laptop per child policy. Play with this. Play with this up. When they are not in school, their kids get together and share knowledge and skills on what they have learned so far. 
We visit the home of another Kenyan, Millicent Ndiewo, a teacher at a private school in Rwanda. Teachers have to be trained on how to use laptops. To many, the training is a tough task. The children are more curious about the laptop and thus learn faster than the teacher. But there is no other option, Millicent says. She too had to learn the programs on the laptop. Most of the time we, we go to school to, to learn computer. Actually, I haven't gone to school. I started and, and dropped. So I'm, I'm not like very computer literate. I would say like uh, I, I know everything in the laptop. But I bought it so that I learn. So most of the time, I, most of the things I know are things that I have learned for myself. The difference in the learning pace between the teachers and the students is clear. When you put a computer in the hands of a baby, in the hands of a child, they don't wait for a teacher. Part of the experience, actually, part of the challenge that we made when we first started was that we got the laptops in the hands of these kids, and the following day, they were ahead of the teachers. Teachers were waiting to be trained. The kids were training themselves. Noor, Rashid, and Christina Doyo are Kenyan children studying in Rwanda. Being in private schools, they are able to take their laptops home. We're very good to learn the laptop. Then, after noon, I was liking it and I keep it at home. I stay with it and I play games. Kenyan children should be given laptops to, to enjoy and also have fun. For those in public schools, however, the public library is what they have to make do with until they are able to take the laptops home. The OLPC project, the One Laptop Per Child project in Rwanda, has reached this far. Inside the Rwanda Public Library is a section set aside. Children, when they are not in school, can come here and advance their skills further on the laptop technology. This is the first ever public library in Rwanda and the visits here are frequent. Inside are tutors who assist the children, explaining what is not easily understood. The children at the capital, Kigali, are the only ones who benefit. Currently, only private schools can take the laptops home, while logistics are being worked on for the same to happen in public schools. Taking the laptops home brought a lot of challenges. Uh, are we sure that they're going to come back to the school? Are we sure that they're going to be well maintained on their way to the school and then at, at, sorry, on their way to the home and at, at their home? Aren't we burdening the students in, having, in providing them something that is value, has the value of $200 in our current market and sending them home with it and coming back? But the issue of laptops in Kenya is one that is more than just a question of safety. It has become a political one, with very many credible points being raised for and against the laptop project. Is an ambitious laptop project a priority for the country? If you go and begin give, give Sarawans laptops, those children carrying laptops going back home, Somebody will be waiting for them on the road <laughs> and they'll pick up all those laptops. Tomorrow they will be in shops in Uganda. <laughs> so it is basically uh, somebody who is trying to implement something upside down, climbing the tree from the top and then from down. The project that was at the heart of the Jubilee campaign platform has also become something of a punching bag for various groups agitating for better pay, notably the teachers who insist it is a case of misplaced priorities. Indeed, even as a section of members of parliament attempted to divert the cash earmarked for the laptops towards paying the teachers but were stopped in their tracks by Jubilee's numerical strength in the house and the president and his deputy have made it clear that the project is here to stay and is a part of a wider government strategy. We have embarked on a mission to connect all our primary schools to the national grid in a 15 billion shilling project. This will enable a success for the 17 billion shilling laptop project. Also benefiting from these interventions are computer laboratories that we are going to have in all our schools for the use by all students. Power to our primary school also benefits local communities who are empowered to grow their small, business, their small scale businesses as we light up millions of homes around the country. 
it, it's not a stunt. You know, the, the laptop issue is not a one-off. And, and it's not something we are doing merely to fulfill a pledge. It is a policy of the Jubilee government to move the country in our effort to transform Kenya, to move the country and use the benefits of a huge fiber optic network that has been laid in the country. Digitize, for your information, all the curricula from standard three to standard eight is already digitized. We want to digitize standard one and standard two and make all the syllabus of our schools available on a digital platform. The Jubilees government fast 100 days have come and gone and 17 billion has already been set aside for the laptop project. In spite of the criticism it has received, are we ready? If though, Kenyans do want to see what a laptop project that works looks like, all they need to do is look west. From the outside looking in, it would seem as if the children of Rwanda could care less about whether the one laptop patch their government was their government's biggest priority. Far from it, they are singing a new song, one about their future, their hopes and their dreams of being global citizens. And somewhere in that song is the story of a laptop. It has been said that the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. Well, Rwanda is also known as the land of a thousand hills and has begun this one but major step in ensuring that their young generation is at par with the rest of the world. The major step being the OLPC project, the one laptop per child project. Masikandia Katian at GS Gisozi 1 Primary School, Gasabo District, Rwanda. This week on Your Perspective, we're asking you whether you think that the laptop project in Kenya is a worthwhile investment for the government. Here are some of your thoughts. Basically, it's, it's a necessity for the children because uh, I think they need it and this is their time because we have a digital generation now. This project is sawa. Lakini kuna vitu wanafaku kwa shida. Kama sahi kuna mashule nyingi asina desk. Mashule nyingi asina... Azina, azina maali watoto wanaka, wanasomea chini ya muti. Minutaka wache yo laptop, ubache yo maalimu mishara ongese yo maalimu, otota ndele ya derasa. I believe it's a priority. The government promised the kids, and the kids come general will be asking for the, for the same. So I believe the government is justified in pushing on with the laptop project, but they should also put their house in order. And your opinions wind up the show for this week. But remember, the conversation doesn't have to end here. You can tweet us on at KTN Perspective or tweet me on at John Allen Namu with some of your thoughts about the show and some of the ideas that you have that we can implement on Perspective. We look forward, as always, to keeping your week in perspective. Same time next week. I'm John Allen Namu. Good night.